नमस्ते एवरीबडी माई नेम इज़ योगी विवेक रावत एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस ऑनलाइन टीचर ट्रेनिंग कोर्स आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द प्रणायामा टेक्निक्स एंड देयर बेनिफिट्स तो आई होप यू इन्जॉय दिस कोर्स नमस्ते नमस्ते एवरीबडी वेलकम बैक टू द प्रणायामा सेसन्स आई बिलीव यू ऑल आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी सो लेट्स स्टार्ट लेट्स कमेंस टू डे सेसन अगेन इन अ सिटिंग कम्फर्टेबल पोजिशन join your palms together keeping your eyes closed bring your awareness towards the breath inhale uh Rub your palms together. Place your palms gently over your eyelids. Absorb the heat energy. Release your palms down. Very gently open your eyes. So, in previous session, we had been talking about Kapala Bhati, intensive technique of. pranayama or shat karma we would say uh this is today bhastrika i can call it or i sometimes call it the big brother of kapala bhati it is also it also comes in the intensive version of the pranayama the intensive it is quite intensive technique it is more intensive than kapala bhati but it is you know very good deep breathing in today's world you may have seen so many people that they are you know breathing but what kind of breath they have what kind of pattern they are following even they know like only they know that they have a shallow breathing pattern they are not utilizing their lungs you know their diaphragm properly so this deep breathing technique is quite helpful for all of them we can practice it daily for beginners i would suggest it they can practice it with the gentleness with intermediate and advanced practitioners they can practice even twice or thrice a day so firstly let understand what it is as the name says bhastrika it means bellows breath you know in modern um, in ancient times the blacksmith he used to you know bellows to you know ignite the fire so it is the breath it you know it resembles that kind of activity that kind of you know procedure and that's why it is said to increase the vitality in the body increase the heat in the body in this technique inhalation and exhalation both will be active and forceful the benefits of this practice you know it is almost the same as in kapalabhati but there are some more benefits also since it is also more intensive than kapalabhati so it removes laziness since it is an intensive version of the practice so any kind of you know laziness you are having it will remove that it infuses more oxygen to the body it removes the co2 the carbon dioxide from the lungs so it has got benefits so many benefits um uh, it improves the metabolism rate in the body it burns toxins very fastly it removes you know the waste is the mucus at end it also improves the brain function 
because you are getting more oxygen in, you are releasing more carbon dioxide out. So it tends to improve the brain function. Now there are some contraindications definitely if it is like you know intensive then Kapalabhati so there will definitely be some contraindications which you need to be aware of. So if you have got high blood pressure, if you have got any kind of heart problem, any kind of stroke problem history, epilepsy, if you have again any kind of spine issues, any slipping, you know, slip disc, um, hernia, in those cases, be very, very careful. Take care of yourself. Uh, again, if you have menstruation, uh, you can just reduce the intensity of the posture or you can do the modification of the posture or you can do other techniques as well. So it also, as I said before also in the previous session, it depends on how you feel. If you feel that you can perform it with the slow rounds even, you just go for it. And you know, any kind of harmness, it, it, you know, it doesn't come to you very soon like it firstly always gives some indications. If you understand those indications, you can get rid out of yours like those kind of harmful effects. Okay, now what are the steps of Bhastrika? Generally, there are uh, you know three kind of processes which we need to follow. So the, in the, the first round, we will go like slow. So we will try to lengthen our breath. In the second round, we will reduce the timing of our breath and we will do it more times. In the third one, we will again reduce the size, like the length of the breath and we will do more fastly. So here, how to do it, the steps of doing it. Again, you can sit comfortably on your mat. You can also do it with one nostril, even this one and Kapalabhati with one nostril firstly. When you think that you are doing, okay, one nostril, like you are totally fine with the one nostril, then you can come with the both nostril because you know, if you do it with the both nostril, you, can, you uh, increase the intensity of the posture, which can lead some injury or maybe some kind of harmful effects if you are not prepared. So again, you need strong core muscles here strong me i mean to say you have you should have a good control over your abdomen muscles if you don't have a good control there if it is you have got too much fat there again you will have to struggle there so the step to do it again you can sit comfortably on your mat keeping your palms on your knees keeping your spine tall chest open neck relaxed now from here, do some yogic breathing for a few rounds. So for the first round, you can, you know, coordinate the movement. You can synchronize the movement with your breath. So it will be a bit easy for you. You know, when you do asana, when you lift your arm up and then when you lean forward. So it is a kind of, you know, easy for you to match the uh, to increase the length of your breath but when you do it while sitting down for first few rounds it is okay but then later on you feel laziness and then you feel like okay like you feel a kind of compression you don't want to do it after that it happens initially but once you become intermediate advanced practitioners uh, your thinking would be something else okay now sitting comfortably on the mat so the first round how it's gonna be you can keep your both arms in front of your body and you can bend your elbows even like this or you can keep your both arms straight depends so from here as you inhale firstly exhale properly so that you can inhale well in the next round exhale then very forcefully remember what we were talking about in ujjayi breath a slight contraction of the back of the throat so some sound of the breathing your breathing should be audible so arms in front of your body exhale completely squeeze your belly in from here inhale so 
so this is the approach which you can follow so as you saw here you can you can uh, increase the length of your inhalation for 2 to 2.5 seconds or even 3 seconds if you can forcefully like so like one and a half or two seconds also it is enough then again two seconds down for exhalation so it is also said in this kind of technique in normal technique you know we as much as we breathe in as we as much breathe out this technique brings 10 times more oxygen to our body as compared to the normal breathing so you can imagine how beneficial it is for even those people who are not breathing well who have not been breathing well for a long time so it improves the lung capacity also okay now the first round now the second round if you uh, have done seven to eight to ten times the first round or you can just keep on doing first this speed for a long time the modification is if you are not feeling comfortable here again exhale you can inhale forcefully and then you can exhale very normally or you can exhale through your mouth so this is the modification so you're not doing forcefully inhale and exhale both together you are kind of giving a modification to yourself if you're not comfortable here so you're inhaling forcefully and then you're exhaling through your mouth very normally so in that way you will not get tired you will not get exhausted sometimes a feeling of nausea you know faintness it comes to you know to our practice you may be feeling you know faint and some kind of nausea nausea but like it is okay if you are feeling it initially uh, it is common but if you are feeling it too much just back off from the practice rest a little bit breathe in breathe out normally calmly and it is like just be gentle with the approach now the second if you want to increase the round again uh, this time you can keep your palms on the knees because it is fast movement so if you just do it very fastly it will may it may disturb you but if it is not disturbing you which is rare so you can keep moving your arms and you can synchronize, synchronize the movement with your breath otherwise you can keep your palms on your knees or you can activate any chain mudra or gyan mudra so the second round one inhalation one second one exhalation one second so from here uh, exhale so in that way you can just keep on performing it now again here if you are not comfortable you can again inhale one second and exhale through your mouth and that way you can perform it now if you want to go towards the third round which is inhalation and exhalation together in one second so fastly right so exhale completely again from here that way you can practice but for the beginners even for some intermediate practices if you're not feeling well just don't proceed to the third round it totally depends how you feel you is all about how you feel and then you apply the principles to yourself to your body right principles the alignment is not the same for everyone so that's about it about this you know intensive technique of breathing it is quite helpful practice it implement it in your lives in a slow way in a gentle way be calm and then you will feel the change slowly slowly so that's it from my side sit comfortably on your mat let's finish the session join your palms together inhale uh. Oh. Uh.
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Grab your palms. Take your palms to your eyes. Release your both arms down. Gently open your eyes. So see you in the next session with new technique of breathing, with a new technique of pranayama. Until then, enjoy, be safe. Namaste. Thank you.